I'm going to talk about uh, bot management uh, and specifically what are the techniques that we use to identify whether these requests come from a human or from a machine. So we call this bot management or bot manager. These techniques are very useful to identify botnets uh, as they happen. These are real time, sometimes high compute, high capacity techniques that we use to identify on the fly and prevent any machine traffic to hit the origin of our customers. As you can see on that screen, there are uh, a few techniques uh, that we use from the most simple technique to the more complex one. Um, very simple techniques are, well, if we know that the bot is, uh, is a good bot, then obviously these good bots should go and, and hit the origin servers of our customers. So the very simple layer uh, of protection is, well, we know these bots are good, therefore they are gonna go through. So that's called a good bot whitelisting. There can be millions of IPs that are part of this uh, good bot whitelisting. And in fact, many of our customers are maintaining this list by themselves. I'm gonna go into a little bit more details into the other five uh, bot management layers, and I will explain in which case they are useful or not. The first one is what I call the first generation of bot management. The idea was, well, Humans are smart, therefore they can uh, solve puzzles, but humans may not. So you may have seen this before on some of these websites, you have a CAPTCHA. Uh, typically the CAPTCHA would appear on the checkout page or just before entering a credit card number. Uh, you have to solve a puzzle, you know, uh, click on the five images that have a car. And if you fail at solving this puzzle, it tells the web application firewall that you may probably not be a human because you cannot solve that puzzle. The second one that is part of this uh, first generation bot management is what we call the IP rate limiting. The idea there was very simple. We said, well, like humans can hit an application's or website maybe two or three times per second per IP addresses that we would allow. And if it's higher than this, we would block it because we would say, well, human cannot browse that fast an application. That's a very simple idea. The problem is, um, the hackers also find this out and also find this to be very simple. So what did they do? Well, they invented the botnet. The botnet means that now instead of having one machine hitting your application, they have hundreds of thousands of machines. So if of each of these IP addresses have very small amount of requests per second, therefore the IP rate limiting would not be able to identify these as coming from a compromised machine instead of coming from a human. Then came the second generation. That's a few years ago. Uh, second generation, we call it uh, at Oracle, the JavaScript challenge. We use the word challenge just because we are challenging the user to have certain characteristic. In this case, we are making sure that the browser that the user is using have a full JavaScript engine. The unsophisticated bot may not have one. And in fact, in many cases, they don't. So the JavaScript challenge is there to say, well, I'm going to inject uh, JavaScript into the page, wait for the browser to resolve that JavaScript. And if the browser is not able to, therefore there's no JavaScript engine, therefore it's probably not a human. It's quite a simple idea, but it's very powerful. It works really, really well against the layer seven DDoS attack. Then we started to realize, it's about a few years ago, that some of the bots are now using what we call the low and slow techniques. Meaning the attack is a few hundred requests that are completely hidden within millions of other requests that would hit the origin server of a company. The low and slow attacks are much more difficult to catch. The hackers can take the luxury of using botnet that do have JavaScript engine. In the case of these most sophisticated attacks, the, the hackers will effectively use botnet that have a JavaScript engine. That's why a few years ago, we started to think of much more sophisticated techniques that are more linked to machine learning techniques than uh, the previous generation. And that is the current generation of bot management, the third generation. Uh, for this one, Oracle WAF have two different protection layers. One that we call the human interaction challenge and the other one called device fingerprinting. These two uh, challenges are looking now much more into the behavior of the end user. And based on the behavior of the end user, we're going to classify the request into human or machine. So we have uh, good models on how a human should behave. The way we consume content is quite universal. Every time the pattern of consumption or the pattern of behavior does not fit into the human model, we're gonna classify this as a machine. 
That's why we call it the human interaction challenge for this particular one. And obviously we're changing a lot of this uh, very often as well, based on how we see human behaving on an application. This is part of the standard package now of Oracle Web Application Firewall. That's uh, the option bot manager that you may see on screen. I really encourage customers to look at this carefully and select these defenses. A good thing of these two defenses is that they automatically activate, meaning the security teams do not need to watch and look at what's happening. They can rely on the platform to identify this and automatically activate these two defenses uh, when the platform believes that something weird is happening. So it's a fully automated bot management techniques that is being embedded into the Oracle Web Application Firewall.